Motorola, the famously fabled phone manufacturer, has strayed from its once legendary position in the industry in recent years, releasing some poorly received devices in the low to mid-range sectors of the smartphone market. I'm personally a huge fan of Motorola and I want to look back and really analyse what happened. So hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas and this is what happened to Motorola. Now for a quick history lesson. The company was initially founded in September of 1928 by brothers Paul and Joseph Galvin in Schaumburg, Illinois as the Galvin Manufacturing Operation. After that, a bunch of stuff happened, some wars, some phones, and 1999 came around, and I was born, so we're going to cover from that point onward. Anyway, by this time, Motorola had pioneered the mobile cell phone, and was known as the king of the mobile cell phone. Its telecommunications were used worldwide by governments, businesses, and consumers alike, and it had been well established as a worldwide presence. In the late 90s to early noughties, some very famous and notable phones were released by the brand, including my very first ever phone, the 1998 Motorola CD930, a phone that my mother would pass down to me to help me learn numbers and technology. Along with this, we have the world-renowned Razorline and L series of phones. At the turn of the decade, Motorola started releasing Android-based smartphones, predecessors of the ones you and I enjoy today. This is where the Razer and Droid series continued with some rather uninspiring devices, putting a downer on an otherwise well-established brand. In fact, putting it frankly, the company was falling, and after losing over 4 million US dollars in just two years, it was time for a drastic rethink. 2011 saw Motorola Inc. split into two companies, Motorola Solutions, a telecommunications organisation that focuses on industry and infrastructure, and Motorola Mobility, a smartphone firm that would take a slightly different fate. A year later, in May 2012, the behemoth company Google acquired Motorola Mobility for 12.5 billion US dollars, taking with it all of the very valuable assets and patents. Under Google, Motorola took on a new lease of life, announcing its alphabetized smartphone line that would continue through to 2019. The Moto X, G and E were tiered smartphones aimed at the ever-confusing mobile space, with the intention of making life simpler, cleaner and, of course, googlier. News outlets and established publications praised the line, particularly the Moto X, for feeling like a step forward, somewhat closer to the renowned Nexus series that would just die in a few short years. In fact, the Nexus 6, a personal favourite of mine, was a larger version of the second generation Moto X, being developed at roughly the same time, the resemblance is as clear as day. Phones developed by the Big M at the time sported excellent updates, a clean aesthetic, and a clear focus on software, allowing them to ship with mid-range hardware and still be competitive. But as it turns out, the match was not made in heaven, and in 2014, Google sold its $12.5 billion investment for just $3 billion, keeping its assets and patents for future projects. Where did the mobile division go, you ask? Lenovo, because that made a bucket load of sense. The Chinese laptop giant has since ruled the once famously excellent mobile firm, and has continued to release alphabetized smartphones with the X now on its fourth generation, Z on its third, and G line becoming the prominent and popular choice among consumers looking for a great value handset. Other notable releases include a Moto Z series and some unique and ahead of the design curve Android Wear based smartwatches. So what makes the Lenovo version of Motorola bad? Two things have made life tricky for the company, its dodgy software update support, and its gimmicky Moto mods. Software updates under Google were excellent, almost parallel to the Nexus brand, which was unheard of at the time. The Lenovo has since been a little bit more slack with what it considers a timely update, and some users have reported to not get updates at all within certain configurations. With regards to the latter, Moto mods have been very expensive, gimmicky, and far too niche for a set of phones that wouldn't get bought by a lot of people in the first place. Lenovo has stepped it up a notch more recently with its Moto G line, but what I fear is that we'll see more brand new products like the Moto P30 and One Vision instead of working on their already decent phones. I truly believe that sorting out the poor software support could result in far more sales and profit by extension than coming out with some blatant copycats and cheeky knockoffs.
Right now, Motorola Mobility isn't finding its feet like it did under Google, and even less so than it did way back in the 90s. It's a shame to see a brand that inspired technology across the globe fall to a secondary or even tertiary option for some consumers. The brand has suffered a lot in the past decade, and I hope that one day the company returns to its former glory, sat alongside the world leader in the laptop space, its owner, Lenovo.